welcome, and you are most welcome, to this edition of the Totally Awesome Fishing Show, which might not even happen. I'm over here on the south coast of Ireland, on one of the biggest low pressures they've ever recorded over here, 970 something, 972, 974. Yesterday we were out on the boat with Mark Gannon, and it, was that a bite? I've got beach rods out, no. And it was just lockjaw on everything. I think we had a couple of blue sharks, bits and pieces, I mean tough. And on the guaranteed pollock ground, we caught no guaranteed pollock. Not one of us on the boat had a bite in three drifts, and it was a like the sure shot honey hole of pollock in Ireland. And now the storm is on us, all boat fishing cancelled, all the other anglers in uh, Mark Anno's B&B, I think are just kicking around like you do. Um, I'm out here banging my head in a brick wall. I've tried, I think they call it Burren Pier over in the estuary. I got weeded out, first cast. I, I sort of knew I would do. It was an ebb tide. And I think, Will it suck the weed out, Graham? Yes, it does. Spring tide, Graham? Yes. Well, what can I say? One cast, I've barely get my tackle back. I've driven around another spot. No, didn't fancy that. I've now come around Coolmain Beach. Nobody here, obviously. <laughs> obviously, there's nobody here. Just look at the bushes behind me. It's howling about a full six, maybe even a seven. It's semi-sheltered. The tides fall. It's not great. I'm giving it a go. I've got sand hill, um, I've got three hook flappers, and I've got rods out with half sand hill, whole sand hill, and I luckily dug a few lugworm last night uh, down opposite the uh, the hotel there. Fingers crossed. Well, I mean, fingers crossed. I've got to cross everything. I've got to cross everything, guys. I don't know what I'm going to catch. I've never fished this place here before in my life, and I've got a feeling I'm going to be fishing for an hour and move, fishing for an hour and move. You've got to adapt, and most of the time on these low pressures, you won't catch hardly anything at all, but... The other guys are back there, I'm out here. I'm still flying the flag for the Totally Awesome Fishing Show. Flying it. I think it's a bit torn from the mast today. This is the back of the car, the Totally Awesome car, in case you want to see while we're passing the time. It is a veritable bomb site of fishing tackle, bait digging forks, boat rods, beach rods, saltwater fly rods, camera bags, tripods. Food down there that I'm uh, treading on, all my sandwiches, what's left over the wife's giving me. Oh, by the way, there's not many people wear waders in the car, and that's because as I got to my first cast, I thought, shall I charge? I've got waders for wading. Obviously, they're for wading, Graham. And there's a surf, and it's like full six. No, best to go in there with a pair of Wellington boots and test it first, just in case you don't have to change into waders. That's right, double booty, a double booty of freezing cold Atlantic Way water. Lovely. So I'm sitting in the car, no socks on, trying to dry my socks out. Well, that's not happening. And a pair of waders on in the car. Now, why not just put the waders on in the first place? I mean, sometimes I do worry about myself. And I'm fishing on my own as well. Terrible. This rain has just not... Oh, Jesus, is that a point? Hang on, guys. Hang on. Let me zoom on that. Is that a point? It could be a chunk of weed, I'm not going to chance it, I don't know, this is Bass Area, switch cameras. You have to treat every bite, well basically, as though it is a bite, you don't know in rough weather, it could be something on the line, it could be a wave banging against the line if you've got it tight, it could be anything there. You've got to treat it as though it's a fish, because, you know, in calm conditions you can see the rod top kick, if you think you've seen a bite, always, always treat it as though it could be something there. In my case, I thought, have I got a thornback ray on there? Uh, no, there's an awful lot of the, that green weed on the beach. And look at this lot, complete washing line full of green weed. Well, I've gone from the Irish weed making factory of Coolmain Beach, horrific place to fish with weed and wind. I've tried, I've, I've tried Kinsale Head, and that's absolutely low fog. You walk off the end of it and straight into the sea, it's too dangerous to fish, although it would be out of the wind. And I've now come to Kinsale, I'm on Kinsale Bridge, possibly waiting for the local gendarmerie to arrive and tell me that I'm not fishing here. Chuck, I've no idea, but there's not a sign that says no fishing, so I'm fishing. I have fished on this before, I had small codling, but that was in uh, autumn, this is in the summer. <laughs> summer! Summer! If I strike and walk backwards, I'll probably get run over, so I'm going to have to keep pretty tight to the bridge here. Guys, my constant moving's paid off. I finally got a fish. You want to see how big, or rather small, it is? 
that's if it doesn't drop off. Horrific wind and rain still, luckily in between the rain at the moment, but there is a fish. Well after my epic catch of that black mouth goby or whatever it was, or blenny, I think it might have been a blenny, off a of Kinsale Bridge, the tide just emptied out, I had no water there, I've come all the way back, look at two more beaches, I can't believe how far I've driven today. Two more beaches, it's low tide, I thought I'd check them out at low tide and it's a very good idea to do that if you are beach fishing. Always check where, <laughs> one place I was going to fish, is, <laughs> got to laugh, it's bone dry and the water's gone about 300 yards, so I've been a right lemon sitting there with bait on the sand, I've got more chance of catching a dog walker I should think. I've driven around, I've found a place called Blind Strand. And I know why it's called Blind Strand, because I've taken at least 35 minutes trying to find it. I found it now, I'm in the right spot. Allegedly, it's low tide, dead low water. I don't really expect much. I've changed from lug, a couple of lug on. I've changed the other to the larger sand hills because there might be a chance of a bigger fish here. But the storm is still with the rain's coming down again. It's not looking good. It's just one of those trips, but I'm trying to salvage a fish or two out of it. The benefit of fishing in the islands is a lot of the time you can get to some of the rock marks and fish from, well, the confines of your car, which in this storm and rain and drizzle and wind, which really doesn't show in this bay, that's the most sheltered bay I could find, you know, you, you can't get any more convenient than this. Look, I've got the car by the side of the road, there's a boat slip there, and yeah, this time I think I've actually got a fish hooked up there. I mean, I've had the proper buy, there was, for some reason, there was less weed in this bay than anywhere else. And I'd already been to several different marks, as you saw. They were either totally windswept or screaming with the weed making factory. Enough to drive you mad. No, we got it right this time. Here he comes. A fish on the end. It's a dogfish. Well, there you go guys, I've got the camera having to balance it in the back, the boot of the car. All that driving paid off. A nice dogfish, as black as your hat as they say. Very, very dark because there's a lot of kelp and weed closer in there. So really pleased to get that dogfish, a humble dogfish can save the day. Look, the blending was alright, that was something, but one real blank saver this is. So there we go, a doggy, and do you know what, every chance of something else. It's not over yet. Well, the wind's howling. Obviously, I'm sheltering the camera as best I can behind the boot and the boot lid. I just thought I'd run through quickly, just briefly how I'm doing the uh, sandals, so I'm putting them on. Now, I've got a three-hook flapper. You don't have to have three hooks, that's just what I'm using. Sandals come normally frozen in a packet in various sizes. You can see them there, different sizes. Now, my suggestion is that they do thaw out pretty quickly. So, put them in a little cool box, keep them cool, and then use them when you want them keep them as chilled as possible because they do go off, they do go soft. Here's how I cut them up and put them on the hook. Okay, let's give this a go, even although conditions are against us. One frozen sand hill, just thawing out. Here is a three hook flapper rig, and there's the snood, that's the length that goes to the hook, okay? These are quite strong, they're only small blued hooks, but they are actually quite strong hook. They're very, very rigid. With these particular rigs, what you have is a sequin which I suppose you could call as, the knot's gone right, I caught so many fish now. It's got the knot there, it's got this sequin, it's a bit of a fish attractor, but it's also a sort of buffer, if you like, against the bait we're going to put on, and then a stop bead just here. Now these can be slid up and down, so I'm going to slide that stop bead up, slide the sequin up, I'm going to nip the tail off there of the sand hill, I'm just going to cut this into three sections, that's all I'm using for these fish. Oh no? Doso Treso. All done in Mexican as well. Okay, let's say for instance you want the head. All I do now is stitch it, what I call stitch it. Now with the head, I go through the jaws to keep it closed. Listen, these aren't clipped down, these rigs aren't clipped down. It's just loose. So what I'm going to do is stop them flying off. I go through once. I go through twice, just under the backbone there. Pull the snood up. You might need to lengthen that piece there just a little bit. And then, come around, it's difficult trying to do it for the camera. I'm going to put it in there, roll it back, 
but put a little nick make sure you don't touch the snood just like this just there a little slot so that when you bend this back like that and pull all these loose coils through it's all going to hang like that nice and straight now if you had a worm you had something loose and we weren't stitching it would slide up here so you slide your sequin down there you put the sequin down so it's touching and then you slide your rubber stop down this is generally for worm fishing for long distance casting to stop the worm blasting up the snood away from the hook but you can see the principle I'm using it with the sandy as well then obviously I'm going to clip my lead on here and I'm going to do the same with the other three snoods now you can elasticate cotton them on if you want that's entirely up to you but this is just the way I'm doing it because I'm giving it a good old heave ho out and using sections here and I've actually got some lug as well if you use combo baits which are very very good beach fishing with combo baits that's two different types put the worm on first and then use this as a buffer to stop, stop the worm coming off right let's get them out there and see if we can't get another fish or two that's a strange stare Graham's got and his fingers poking right through the screen that must mean he's seen something he's racing out like an Olympian to get to that rod in time but unfortunately he's carrying a great big five kilo camera as well but switch to the head cam and here we go hit that fish get the bite oh dear is it a snake no Graham doesn't think it's a snake Graham thinks he's actually got something on the end moving it's a much heavier weight what could this be is it another dogfish I don't care it's a fish and after driving about 60 or 70 miles to all those different marks I'm happy enough to have something on the end of my line that's not we. Yes, it's a greater spotted dogfish, even bigger than the LSD. This is a bull hus. I'm going to take it up the top and show it and talk about it. The camera's crooked, do I care? No. Oh, man. A bull hus. Bigger than a dogfish. This is a crackerjack fish to catch. Look at the jaws on it. It looks fairly disgusting if you're not a fish lover. For, for us fishermen, a bull hus is a good catch. Now, these things grow way for this. 20 pounds, but well, it's unlikely to get them off a beach that sort of size or rocks. Gotta watch those other rods now, I'm all fired up. Sandhill did it again. I'm gonna get it out. I did say I thought it was another chance. The tide's flooding. I've got two choices. I can either go back to the pub, have a meal, have a nice pint of Murphy's, pack it of fresh sandals and come out here for say nine, ten o'clock and fish the top of the tide. Or should I just hang on? You know what the old saying is? Never leave feeding fish. Let's get this guy back. Guys, interesting. Look what he's puking up. You might be having your tea yourself. That's not my blood, it's not his blood. Look, there's a claw. He's been on crabs, crunching them up. Look, there's two pinches. There's two pinches of the crab. So he's puked up crabs, 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 crabs. But that's a bit weird because I'm using a sandal. Tells you the bull hus eats anything. Ooh, is that windy? Well, by now, I was really getting into it, watching for the bites. I could tell something was gonna happen, yet yeah. fish after fish, hauling up nice big Irish dogfish, get it over the slipway, there you go, weed as well. A little bit of weed about, but nothing like the other um, areas of rock and beach I fished. So, fish on the bite, I am in the zone. I speak as a howling wind, I've got it behind the brick wall here. Wait for this. There's two Irish girls, not unattractive, I hasten to add, and a young Irish man, and they're going swimming in the sea. Now look what I'm wearing. Fairly handsome, full metal jacket, and they're going swimming. They make them tough in here in Ireland, for sure. And this is another tough one. Dogfish are on the bite. That's my second rod, it's my spinning rod. I can't even get the other rod out now. My worry is, am I going to hook one of those mermaids? Let's get this one back. Well, 
Well, I'm having to do this from the shelf of the boot. It's very black up the front there. Does not look good at all. I've had six dogfish and a bull hut in, I can't tell you how fast. So that just goes to show you. You cannot write the day off even as bad as it seems. But I think the thing in my favour is not the persistence here. I think it's a fact that I looked at a lot of these places at low tide. Well, all by one, which obviously disappeared totally and turned into a cricket pitch. But it paid off big time, so I've had a really good session shore fishing now. I've got two or three sanders. I'm probably going to go back to the pub and either call it quits, which is, well, pint of Murphy's and a nice hot meal. There's a good chance of that, especially if that rain comes in. If not, I'm going to come back out, stock up with some more sanders and try and hit it and get about between nine and ten. So I've got about an hour and a half off. The fish are in here. I feel at high water there might be more fish in here. I'm getting bites all the time. And I think I've lost one or two sets of gear, but well, hey-ho, that happens when you're fishing sort of reef and beachy areas. So I hope you've enjoyed watching the Totally Awesome Fishing Show. If you don't see me again on this episode, you will know I'm holding a pint of Murphy's. Right, well, I'm back in position, as they say, all ready for action. I couldn't resist coming back. I had to push it a little bit, guys. So I've been back to Wood Point. That's my base here, my bed and breakfast. That's Mark Gannon's place. Uh, what for? More bait. He's got the freezer, he's got the sandals. So I had to get another packet of bait. So I've been in the pub, I've had my grub. Wait, wait for this, you'll love this. I play some chips. Well, seems a bit weird for fishermen. Had a pint of Murphy's, back in action. It's still horrible out there. It may have had, it just stopped a tad. I got my rods out, same rigs, same thing. Of course, I might lose out here because as they say, never leave feeding fish and that's just what I've done. At the moment, nothing's happening. Do you know what, I think because the tide's filled and it's gone further in now on the beach, maybe I might drive the car another 50 yards further down and follow the fish in. I told Mark what I've been catching, he was quite impressed with it, he said it's good for shore fishing, but he said, watch out, there's always a chance of a bass in here because you've got rock next to beach. Fingers crossed, eh? I started using slightly bigger baits, those combos of sand hill and lugworm and trying to send them out as far as I could, using the wind to hopefully cast slightly downwind, across and downwind, which might get me a bit of extra distance. Now, you don't have to use big baits and a standard pulley rig like I was using there. You can also use, which I did for the dogfish, just like a three hook flapper rig. But you don't always need to clip your bait down. Some people are paranoid about getting distance. But here in Ireland, don't forget, there's deeper water close to shore and there's far more fish per angler, although I'm having trouble walking up the pier against a full seven gale. Watch this guys. Yes, we all know what's happened there. Yes, we do, don't we? A lot of us have been there many, many times before. Here we go, pull for a break, snag city, oh dear. One thing you should do, when you're fishing, say with a grip lead or any rough ground, just walk backwards as you strike and wind because you've got to get that lead and that fish off the deck, off the bottom, if you're gonna have any chance of landing it, don't be afraid to give them a lot of welly and keep them on the move. If you stop winding, then it's gonna bury in snags. Also, hand line it up anywhere. Don't lift it with a rod, because you could break your rod top. Indeed, I've done it, so I do know. And just be very careful. You don't cut yourself using bread. Now, there's like a three hook flapper, and over the side, is Mr. Dogfish again with a mouthful of weed. So it just goes to show you, you don't always need a big bait to get some decent fish. And boy, after all my driving around, I was so grateful for it. It seemed to be fish after fish after fish. And in this weather, I take anything that comes along. It goes to show you, it's still biting, not quite as prolific. I'm gonna move the car take a gamble, probably might blank now, and go tighter into the beach, and hopefully I can pick up one or two fish coming back. If I don't, I've had great it's a little session here after all those moves and all that mileage. Seven dogfish and a bull hus. 
just from the one move to the final spot. Let's try yet another move. Well, I'm still going to send a whole sand here out there. Pretty sure 90% when I first came, this was all dry, so it's straight sand. I'm going to be using it like that. Clip down a short pulley panel rig and about five ounce grip lead. The only trouble is, there's telegraph poles, and the closer I come to the beach, the lower the lines are. So I can't do an overhead cast. I've got to do a sideways cast. Otherwise, if I, if I catch that, a, I will be leaving the scene fairly quickly and B, don't expect to make any calls to Ireland. What is this one? Nothing. You came off. Why do you? It's totally mullered. The fish came off out there. There was a whole sand hill. An entire whole sand hill. Just mashed totally in two. So trust me, there was a fish on there, probably a doggy and maybe the whole sandal was a little bit too big for him but I was thinking bass. Worth hanging on here. Well here we go people. Just cast your mind back to the start of the film where my prize catch was that four inch long goby. Nothing on this sandal. Oh dear that's a shame. Nothing on this section of sandal but on this one who knows what it is. Yeah, it's a rockling. That one looks like when the dark, a three bearded, it's nearly dark now, a three bearded rockling there. Now, when you start getting rockling guys, it's normally a sign they're fairly lethargic species, it's time to pack up and go home. I may be wrong, but when I go beach fishing and I catch rockling, it's time to call it quits. So, thanks for watching the Totally Awesome Fishing Show. We put Mr. Rockling here back. It's all rubbery and slimy and yucky. Now, nice bass, different altogether. Thanks for watching the Totally Awesome Fishing Show. A few tips there, make sure you tough it out, keep moving, keep changing, and most important, even in stormy weather, you can see I've come up with a really good day. 10 dogfish, a nice big bull husk, rockling, and Monsieur little three inch fish off the bridge. I've done about 50 miles around the country lanes in Ireland, but a great trip, back you go. And don't forget, watch the Totally Awesome Outdoors Show, Bam! Hit that subscribe button. We'll see you next time.